As people continue to get vaccinated and we see schools and businesses start to open back up, we want to make sure we continue the trend in a positive direction. And here to share more on that is Dr. Sarah Beth Hartledge with the Louisville Metro Department of Health. Hi, Dr. Hartledge. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So how are we doing in the battle against COVID-19 in our area right now? So at the moment, things are pretty stable. We're seeing more and more people get vaccinated. Uh, the kids are back in school and case numbers are staying relatively uh, low and stable. We do know that we have an increasing number of uh, cases of the variant versions of COVID-19 appearing in our community. And so uh, we continue to be in a bit of a race against those variants and uh, hoping that we don't see another wave coming from that. Absolutely. And, and some exciting news is I understand that a new mass vaccination site is opening soon. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, University of Louisville Health is going to be opening a uh, mass vaccination site at uh, or right outside of Cardinal Stadium. And uh, they'll be giving uh, lots of vaccines there. It'll actually be the largest site in the state. And at the same time, uh, we'll be winding down our operations here at Broadbent Arena and pivoting to a uh, mobile vaccination model so that we can reach um, some members of our community that have had trouble getting access. And is it true that people 16 and older are going to be able to be eligible? Yes, yeah, so Pfizer, um, the Pfizer vaccine product is approved for folks 16 and up. And beginning on April 12th, everyone 16 and up should be eligible to register. That is fantastic. Okay, and as we see cases decline, hope surges in our community that we'll be going back to normal soon. But is there a timeline for that? And what should we be doing to keep another surge from happening? So I think um, we all hope that we get to see normalcy before too long. Um, and we have made some significant strides, but now is not the time to give up, right? So um, we are seeing increasing numbers of our community be vaccinated. Uh, we've got over 30% of our uh, Jefferson County residents that have had at least one shot so far, um, but that's only about halfway to our herd immunity threshold. So until we get to that point, we have to keep doing all those things we've been doing for the last several months, wearing our mask, uh, staying home if we can, social distancing when we need to be out, washing your hands, and then uh, participating in contact tracing and quarantine if you um, get exposed and have not yet been vaccinated. And you mentioned herd immunity. What needs to happen for our community to reach herd immunity? Is it all about vaccinations? So herd immunity is a term that refers to um, that refers to vaccinations in this setting. We do know that we have some folks out there who have immunity from the natural infection, uh, but unfortunately, it seems that that immunity does wane over months, and so. Uh, the only ones that are getting uh, counted, so to speak, toward herd immunity are the ones uh, who've gotten their vaccination. And we're looking for um, about 70 to 80 percent of our population needing to be vaccinated to reach that threshold. So really, it's just like it's just a process. We all just have to hang in there until that can happen. But wh what do you say to people who are nervous about the vaccine or don't feel like they need to get it, like they want to be in that percentage that doesn't get it? So I guess my first statement would be that if everyone makes that choice that they're going to count on someone else to get vaccinated and uh, then then no one will get it and we'll never reach that threshold. Um, for those who are nervous, I think that's um, totally understandable that uh, it's a new product and things continue to change rapidly. Uh, we do know people have been scared about side effects, but most people tolerate the vaccine very, very well. Uh, maybe a little bit of soreness or fatigue, but most people don't have any serious issues. And, you know, every shot that you get, um, it saves not just your own life, but it helps to save the lives of others. So I think um, it's good for you, but it's also good for your friends, your neighbors, your family, um, and the whole community to help um, get out there. It's one thing you can do actively to help the rest of the area. Absolutely. And I will say I've talked to multiple people, all different ages who have gotten vaccinated. And I've been surprised at how many people have, besides a little bit of soreness in their arm, even from the second vaccine, haven't gotten sick or anything. Right. Which do you think that has to do with like the, the strength of their immune system? Or is it just something that you just don't know? Everyone reacts differently. So everyone does react differently. I've even had a few people say to me, are you sure my vaccine's working? Because I didn't feel terrible afterward. Um, because that's sort of the things they've seen on the internet or whatever, but um, everyone reacts differently. There does seem to be a bit of a different reaction in folks who have already had COVID versus those who haven't. Um, and, you know, some people just mount a stronger response to it. 
and um, they do get that fatigue and soreness or um, things like that. But as you mentioned, most people do really well with it. And it's absolutely worth the risk just to protect everybody. And, and with spring break this week and the Easter holiday coming up this Sunday, what advice would you give people who want to get together with friends and family or travel? So just like we've been saying all along, um, if you don't have to, you should think about staying home. But if you are going to travel or be around other folks, we do recommend, um, you know, if the weather's nice to take your gathering outside so you've got more ventilation. Um, limit the size of your gathering to just a couple of households. If everyone's vaccinated, you can consider uh, removing your masks, but if not, we recommend you go ahead and wear a mask um, and keep spread out, especially if you're gonna be eating where you're not wearing a mask. So uh, travel in particular, we ask you to uh, get tested when you return um, and make sure that you're not accidentally carrying an asymptomatic COVID infection into your place of school um, or place of business when you get back. You certainly don't want to be uh, spreading or contributing to that accidentally. Absolutely. And if people want to learn more, where is the best place to go to learn about everything we talked about? So um, we maintain a repository of all that information on our website, which you can find at louisvilleky.gov slash vaccine with all the latest up-to-date information about eligibility, how to get scheduled and um, links and phone numbers for all the providers in town who are offering vaccines. Fantastic, Dr. Hartledge, thank you so much for always keeping us updated. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, thank you so much.